Welcome back to GDC 2022. I am Jim Schultz, the head of community at Incredibuild. We are here in San Francisco with Mr. Dory Exterman. My honor to be with you here. He's our CTO. Do you want to do a quick introduction of yourself? Yeah. So uh, my name is Dory. I'm the CTO of Incredibuild for many years now. Uh, so, so many things moving and changing in the gaming industry through these years. And I think this is a really exciting time to be, you know, a lot of new trends, a lot of new technologies, things are really bursting. The gaming industry is actually on fire, you know, spreading to multiple industries. We see that everywhere, not only in gaming, which is, which is super. And uh, it's, it's, I, I'm feeling very fortunate to be part of this uh, industry and community and driving this trend forward with, with the new stuff that we are doing today. Yeah, it's great to be back here too with everyone actually here in person again. Finally, yeah, right? it's amazing. I mean, so yeah, proof that this is industry is not going anywhere. It's only going to keep getting bigger. Yeah, yeah. And meeting people face to face after three years, no GDC, you know, it was really good. Isn't that great? It's yeah, awesome. it is. So uh, um, I, I have a couple of topics that I want to ask you about. Um, and the first one I think is, is interesting because it's a topic that I hadn't really talk to you in great detail about anyone uh, before uh, joining Incredibuild. But it's, it's really about uh, being a green technology or a green company. So, uh, and it seems weird, like, because we don't produce a physical product, right? We don't have a, we don't have a physical carbon footprint, really, other than the office space that we rent and the shirts that we buy and all that stuff. But uh, can you talk about that? Because I think it's really interesting how we kind of play into to being a, a green company, how we enable other companies to be green using our technology too. Yeah, yeah. That actually, uh, we haven't spoken about it that much in the past. You know, we were always about productivity, fast, you know, being able to iterate fast. And these are the messaging that we highlighted. But from the beginning, you know, incredible ability to, to harness computers that are already there in order for you to be able to run your compute much faster was always uh, minded in terms of green. You know, that's, that's exactly green technology. I think when we are looking at green technology today, I think that uh, a lot of focus is, is towards software that will allow hardware to become greener, right? So I think it's more, it's all about making, you know, the same hardware more efficient, more lasting, so you don't need to replace everything uh, every year. When you're looking at incredible in that perspective, it really uh, suits very well, you know, to all this green, green uh, uh, motion. Uh, w even when we started back then, you know, uh, when we had only an on-prem solution before we, we developed our cloud offering as well, uh, the ability to uh, take a single machine and, and use all the compute power of all the other machine, these other machine already connected to the to the electricity, you're already paying for the space, for the hardware, for the electricity that's running them. And actually, the, most of the time, they are not being used, right? They, you have an eight core machine, you, a salesperson or someone is just using one core, and seven cores, you're just you know, wasting electricity on them without making any efficient use out of them. And from the other hand, you have developers, you have artists, you have designers who really need the compute power. So without Incredible, they will just need to buy more and more expensive machine every year in order to accommodate that or have very big servers, you know, to run this uh, much faster. But with Incredible, we are able to harness all this electricity and compute power that is already there running and, and consuming, you know, carbonizing, etc. And, right. and with Incredible, you can just, you could just use them. So it, it's twofold. One, 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 way, one thing is that you're using, you know, your, 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 uh, the energy that you're consuming much more efficiently, right? You don't need to add more computers because Incredible can harvest the computers you have which are idle, you know, the compute power that is idle. And that's from one perspective. From, and, and the second perspective is that without Incredible, Customers and developers needed to always buy a new and newer and newer machines with more and more cores in order to get you know the performance that they wanted. So they needed to throw the old hardware, buy new hardware, which is you know very very uh, uh, inefficient in terms of uh, the way that you want to serve there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, 
back in the days when, when, I mean, people still using data centers, but so many data centers are in the cloud now, right? But when it was real iron and a real data center and you're paying for machines, like you said, there's a bunch of stuff that's never being 100% utilized. Yeah. But with a solution like this, you can actually 100% utilize what you have. Yeah. And it's not even 100%. From, from what we're seeing, it's something like even less than 20% of the, the, the actual compute power that you're, you're paying electricity and you're, you're paying for is not being, 80% is not being used. So you're using just something like 20% of your organization. And with Incredibly, you could, uh, customers can prolong, you know, their desktop, their laptops, because Incredibly allow them access to infinite amount of compute capacity. So they don't need to take an eight core laptop and, and transition to 16 and 32 core laptop, because Incredibly can give them 800 cores, you know, inside their laptop. Uh, of, of, of resources, they're already paying, you know, they consume the space and IT and everything else, and you can just use them. So we also allow you to keep your hardware longer and, you know, replace it less frequently. Well, let's talk, since that, that kind of leads into the whole cloud discussion, right? Of course. Can you talk about how, how uh, Incredibility is really empowering gaming companies specifically, right, to, to really leverage and harness the power of, of the cloud? Yeah, so I think that, uh, it also ties with the green technology, you know? Uh, with the cloud, you know, it's either, if you're on-prem and uh, you, you exhausted your compute capacity, Incredible allow you to seamlessly uh, burst to the cloud for additional compute power. Uh, but with Incredible, we can, we can do that dynamically. So without Incredible, you needed to, in advance, just get these machines, they would be running all day, they will consume more energy, uh, of course, you'll pay more because they were there all day. And with Incredible, and that's exactly how software can, can really improve you the way we consume energy because it's, it's a matter of efficiency. So with Incredible, we can burst you really according to the number of, of, of processes that you want to run. So we can burst you to 800, 1000 cores. Once you don't need them anymore, Incredible knows immediately when you don't need these processes anymore and we just shrink back you know all these instances that we create for you in the cloud so you can get the, the maximum benefit with the minimum resource consumption so that's green for you as well yeah. and when you're looking at the pure cloud uh, it's it's kind of the same another aspect in the cloud is the ability to use spot instances mm. so spot instances are instances that uh, the cloud vendors need to keep you know alive they consume the energy, they consume the waste yeah. and everything, and the cloud vendor has to keep them because he's, 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 he needs to do that as part of SLA agreements with customers. Uh, but they are there and they are not doing anything, right? This is why the cloud vendors are allow, allowing you to, to get them in cheaper prices. But one of the downsides of spot instances is that uh, the cloud vendor has his SLA. So if the customer needs this yes. spot instance back, it's a minute, they give you a minute notice and they, need, they take it back from it's you. Exactly why, I talk to lots of people that want to pay less for the spot instances, but they don't want them to be taken away. Exactly. They don't want to use them. Sure, because when you're running a build or a shader compile or graphics or whatever, and it takes you 30 minutes to run them and you're waiting for this 30 minutes and after 28 minutes, someone takes your spot instance and that's it, you need to rerun everything. It doesn't make sense. So essentially, a lot of scenarios in the gaming industry actually cannot make use of this spot instances. Right. But with Incredibuild, we actually enable these, these companies to make use of these spot instances because what we're doing is that instead of taking a very large machine and running everything on this large machine, we allow you to take a very small machine, a four core machine, for example. And then according to the number of tasks that you're actually spawning and Incredibuild takes hold of your queue of tasks that you're spawning, Incredibuild is distributing these tasks remotely to remote machines. And with Incredible, we can actually run them on spot instance. And the reason is that we have a very unique virtualization technology that once this spot instance is being taken, there was only a few tasks running there and Incredible took hold of these tasks. So if the spot instance is being taken, we can simply rerun these specific tasks on a different machine. It's not your entire build, right. it's just this specific task. Your build will continue, it will end, right? So without Incredible, these kind of workloads like builds, graphics, etc., wouldn't be able to use these spot instances. And Credibuild is the, is the kind of glue that enables you to do that. And using spot instances is, is you know, really affects, you know, really uh, improve decarbonization because these spot instances are already there. So instead of consuming more 
resources, more new resources, having the cloud versions uh, uh, instantiate more machines, you can use the machines that are already there, which make it, again, much more efficient in terms of software, which makes it much more efficient in terms of energy consumption. Uh, I think we'll see that much more in the industry when it, when it progresses. You think we're speaking about a lot in the metaverse, which is going to require huge compute uh, uh, demands. And you have the Intel CEO speaking about software being the, the part that will be missing in order to take the limited hardware capacity and make it efficient enough in order to support these large use cases that we are going to see in the future. Incredibly, this part of this motion. What have you seen, it, in, and I think a, a lot of people work in a situation where they're asked just to reduce cloud costs, yeah. period, right? What's the yeah. bottom line? How much does it cost? How do we, so what have you seen in terms of, like by leveraging Spot and by leveraging uh, uh, distribution in the cloud with IncrediBuild, can you talk about any of that? Are there any specific numbers or percentages? And yeah, I, I know will. it's become more salesy, but, but yeah. uh, I think it's, it's important. I think, it's, I think it's, not, it's not sales. Actually, it's, it's, more, it's more than that. I think that it's not that, you, so you see, you see companies that are already in the cloud and they are looking to, to reduce their costs, you're right, and do consumption maybe. But I think that one of the things that we see, especially in the gaming industry, is that the cost of the cloud being a blocker for innovation, right? If it wouldn't be for the costs in the cloud, everyone in the gaming industry would be probably in the cloud today, right? Yeah. So the only blocker, the main blocker for adopting cloud uh, is costs. And uh, with IncrediBuild, uh, the way that we do things, one of our main strategy, and that's what we're focusing, is to reduce these costs. It's not only to reduce costs for people who are already in the cloud, it's to reduce cost also to enable customer to be able to adopt these technologies that are actually looking for, and the cost is a blocker for them. So if we'll take, you know, the, the real case scenario, right? For example, if you want to have as a gaming company that, you know, most of the gaming companies and studios here, they want to be the best, you know, we have some, with Incredible, we are, we have 95% of the AAA studios. They are in constant race to be the best, release much faster than anyone else. They are in constant competition. It's a race, right? Uh, the metaverse also, it's a race for the one who's going to dominate the metaverse. So people are willing to spend a lot of money, but still for a lot of studios, this is a blocker for the cloud adoption. So if you want to be the fastest you can go in the cloud, you'll take the best machine out there. For example, so you'll take a 64 core machine, but with 64 core machine, uh, you sometimes need 300 cores because you're running a large workload, but in the same workload, for example, in build, you'll need sometimes 300 core, but then later you just have one task of linking and you'll pay for 63 cores that you're actually not using during this period. So it's very costly, it's not efficient, it's, it's, it's consuming energy unnecessarily. And with IncrediBuild, the way that we offer you to do that, is instead of taking this 64 core machine, you can take a smaller four core machine. And once you need 300 cores, IncrediBuild will automatically scale you up with the cores that you want. And once you have just one link, we'll shrink you back to have four cores. So you won't pay for 63 additional cores that you're not using, you'll just pay for three. Just by doing that, Incredible was able to save 30% on, on customers' cloud cost reduction. And that's, that's an amazing number, right? Uh, when we're adding the spot instances, uh, Incredible, as I said, is, the, is a way to enable the usage of cloud spot instances. So instead of distributing these processes to reserved instances, Incredible can distribute these processes to spot instances. When we're using spot instances to the equation, our customer report for additional 30% cost reduction to their cloud infrastructure. Yeah, it, this results in 45% cost reduction to cloud infrastructure. When you take cost reduction, cost reduction equals efficiency in the energy consumption if we go back to green. So every cent that you are able to reduce in cost means that you are able to use less compute or use compute more efficiently. So for every dollar that you reduce in cost, that's a dollar you reduce in spending energy, right? Consumption. So this is with the distribution technology of Incredible. Now, one of the most exciting technologies that we have, and we are going to, we're releasing it this year. We already started, you know, uh, deploying it with several customers and it's super promising. Uh, it's a new technology of, of caching. Oh, yeah. uh, cache and reuse. So caching is the ability to 
uh, to reuse something that someone else already built instead of rebuilding it. And in the gaming industry, you have a lot of scenarios where, ca where caching can be applied. So for example, if I'm building something and 10 minutes after uh, a colleague of mine is, is building something similar, instead of him needing to rebuild everything again, if he can use some of the artifacts that are already built or intermediate artifacts that are already built, it will be much faster, much cost efficient, much less resource consumption in, to copy just the artifacts that I already built instead of recomputing and right. building them again. So the same manner in which we are doing the distribution uh, uh, technology of Incredible, which is generic, so customers can use our distribution technology for a variety of stuff, they're using it. Our, our, our focus was always in, in build, you know, and graphics, etc. But our, we have tons of case studies of customers using it for unit testing, packaging, uh, image light map baking, uh, data conversion. You know, there are so many use cases in the gaming industry. And we wanted to keep the same approach for caching as well. So uh, and our caching technology is very unique in the way that we developed it. It's actually patent pending because of its uniqueness in terms of technology. And usually when you have a caching technology, it, it's, I, 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 it's usually on targeting a very specific problem. So you'll have a caching technology for this specific compiler, for this specific use case, because it really ties up to the, to the workload itself. With, with our new technology, our caching is generic in the same sense that our distribution is generic. So we'll be able to allow you to cache almost everything that you have as part of your workload. We, we're starting with Visual Studio, C++, Unreal Engine, uh, but we're going to grow that to all the portfolio that Incredible supports today. It's going to also allow us to uh, target uh, shorter workloads, you know, because caching is faster than even distributing, right? You don't need to do something, it's always faster than doing it faster, right? <laughs> right. Uh, and when, when we take it to the, to the discussion that we have about cost reduction, so if we see 45% cost reduction, you know, in just better and more efficiently running your compute, with caching, you're actually avoiding of running compute. And then you're completely avoiding the compute cost as well. So caching is both going to highly add an additional layer of cost reduction to, the, to what Incredible offer, and it really depends on how much you'll cache. If you'll have 100 cache hit, you'll cache everything 100%, so no compute power is required at all, right? So your cost reduction will be maximized. Uh, so it will always be some kind of percentage, but it will surely give you another layer of cost reduction and another layer of performance. So caching is all about not avoiding doing stuff, even if you can do them faster. Yeah, and, and I think that once we get to numbers which are around 75, 80% cost reduction, that will make the cloud being uh, less of a blocker. And that's what we want to allow our customers. They really want to go to the cloud, but the cost is a barrier. And actually, you know, when we are working with, uh, with, uh, with our cloud vendor partners, we are working with all the major cloud vendors. Uh, in, in GDC, we had some... Yeah. Exciting announcements. I yep, don't know. Yep, I was there. I yeah, got this. Yep. Of course. In GDC, uh, both uh, Amazon and Microsoft announced uh, Studio in the Cloud, right? Yep. And, and they really want to allow these customers uh, to, to move to the cloud because that's, and everyone wants that. That's the trend. Everyone's going to be there. It's just a matter of time. You know, it's much more efficient. People are looking to grow fast. They were looking to have an environment ready for them, you know, in a click of a button. They don't want to spend a lot of time on IT. Uh, they want to be able to support hyper growth. They want to be able to support scalability. You have all these cloud services. So people want that. The cloud vendors are really uh, uh, doing a lot of efforts to encourage the community to do that. And, and one of the things that they've done, and this is part of the announcements, is the announcement of gaming in the cloud. So they kind of take the, the market leader partners, you know, for the gaming industry uh, uh, and kind of assemble them together in order to offer an experience which is the easy button experience, you know, just yeah, yeah. get me an environment, I can start working, right? It's good for indie developers, it's good for new studios, it's good for the studios that are hyper growing and always hiring more and more people. Yeah. And, and Incredible is in both, you know, both Studio in the Cloud. We are partnered both with uh, Microsoft Studio in the Cloud, Amazon Studio in the Cloud, and, and Incredible is, is reducing costs, you know. So 
reducing costs, and actually the cloud vendors are pushing you know, a technology that reduces costs in the cloud. It's kind of counterintuitive in a way, right? Yeah, we were I was talking about that with Reggie, same exact discussion, which, but it's, I think it's great because it shows that they're as interested about their customer satisfaction as we are, and so everyone just wants to give them the best experience exactly. possible. Exactly, so there are two things. One, that's the major thing. They want the customer satisfaction. They want to enable them to move to the cloud and get the best experience out of the products. I think that was always the agenda of these vendors. They have a very, they look very far to the future. They want to get the, to have the best environment, the best services, and the best customers on their services. So they wanted, they, if they could, they would have reduced their cloud cloud uh, bills as well. But yeah. they can't. You know, they have their their limits as well. Right. So one of the things that they can do is they can partner with with software companies like Incredible, who can reduce their the customer cost uh, and and allow them to kind of adopt this this cloud. And actually, they are not losing. You know, because. If we'll take uh, scenarios with Incredible, for example, we have a, a, a customer accelerating the unit test from 11 hours to 11 minutes, which is super dramatic. It's doing, he's doing that in the cloud. Yeah. So you can say that Incredible will cut down, you know, 50% of his cloud cost, you know, and the cloud vendor loses because Incredible dared. But that's not the case. Because once a customer can reduce his uh, test iterations from 11 hours to 11 minutes, before Incredible, he was able to iterate his test only once or twice a day. Right. Now, once he reduced it to 11 minutes, he's able to run his test iterations 20 times a day. And if he's running these 20 times a day iterations, then the cloud vendor get much more consumption. So essentially, the customer pay less per workload that is running, but now he can run more workloads. So essentially, uh, he's using the cloud more. So it's not a lose, it's a win-win for everyone. Yeah, even if he's using it the same amount, paying the same amount, he's getting more iterations, he's getting better quality exactly. for the same amount of money. Exactly, and, it's, and today it's all about getting to the market faster. In the gaming, it's not about getting to the market faster because you have a strict release date, but uh, it's getting to the market with the quality that you want and getting to the market on time. And that's what concerns them. And if they have more iterations, they can have better quality, they can have better grains, and that's only for the development part. If you're looking at graphic part, for example, shader compilations, artists, you know, if they, want, if they need to wait one hour in order to try something, for example, I'm having a zombie game and the scene looks too cheerful and I want to change something, and now it will take me one hour to wait just to see if it gives the effect that I, that I want, I say, ah, it's good enough, right? <laughs> right? But if it takes me just two minutes, I can try more. And try more yeah. means better gr game graphics. And game graphics is what sells games today. So it's not only about quality, it's about not only about quality of the game features, it's also about the quality of the graphics, the faster iterations, and the ability to release on time in high quality. And we've seen it, some games, you know, some fiascos last year and this year, you know, with quality, so I think that quality and the ability to iterate fast is going to dominate the trends in the market. Yeah, you can't QA in production. You've got to have a quality product at release, right? Exactly. And today it's all about continuous. It's all about giving continuous value, continuous iteration, continuous value to the customer. Uh, if you have, and every game ships with bugs, so you want, to you want to have fast iterations in order to fix them faster. Every game has a SQL. You want to get this week SQL to the market. You, you can, if you can shorten your, your, your roadmap, you know, because you can iterate faster, you know, you can ship more games, you can get more revenues. It's all about that. Yeah, what's interesting too, uh, uh, we keep talking about how cost is the biggest concern uh, in, in moving to the cloud. It used to be the discussion was all around security. And you and I had a discussion with somebody a few months ago where we talked about that and, and they said, yeah, actually the cloud providers have better security than I do, yeah. so no, security is great. It's just the cost. Yeah, it just boils down to the dollars. It's just the cost. In the past, yeah, there were concerns about security, but I think that today everyone understands that the amount of investment these cloud vendors put on the cloud makes it much more secure than you can do on-prem. Uh, you know, back then, no one thought uh, of putting all their business information, uh, business customers' information in the cloud, and now everyone's using Salesforce, right? So I think that's where we're heading, it's for sure. Awesome. Well, 
Dory, I have uh, one more question for you. And this is the question we're asking everybody. We're at the gaming conference, so I'd like to ask you what you, one of your favorite gaming memories is. And this can be anything recent, long time ago, whatever you'd like to, whatever comes to mind. So I think, actually the first thing to come to my mind is, is, is a gift I got. I think it was when I was 11 years old. Mm -hmm. I got a package from my father, you know, and he said, that's, that's a gift for you. And I unwrapping it, that was Atari. <laughs> and it was the first version of Atari. You just and, gave away your age a little bit, that's okay. Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> what can I do, what can I do? Uh, but still, you know, from Atari, being here in GDC 2022, yeah, yeah. you know, wow, <laughs> that's exciting, it's you know? <laughs> Uh, so uh, Atari, and I remember the first game, you know, we set all the family together, just watching, you know, two sticks with a ball, you know, and trying to, <laughs> to score, you know, one another, and we're playing with joysticks, which we weren't even joysticks, and it was so fascinating. We, we've kind of felt we're in the in sci-fi, you know, future. Oh, yeah, It was right. just, you know, we, and, and it was very exciting. Yeah, I'm actually controlling kid. something on the screen. That was Amazing, so it was top of the edge. This, these two things that I can move with a ball, <laughs> Spinning between them, it was wow. So on your, I remember we had a Pong was our first video game console when I was a kid, so I gave away my issue, but um, they had the regular size paddles and the ball regular speed, but you could make the paddles smaller yeah. and you could make the ball go faster. Yeah, so yeah. we would make them as small as we could yeah, and the yeah, balls yeah. fast. That was for experts, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, experts only. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and today, you know, I'm speaking, we, I had something like three games or four games in my Atari and I played them all day long, you know, with friends coming in, so much excitement around these four games. I think I've played these four games for years. And now we are giving a giveaway, you know, of Game Boys with 400 <laughs> games on, on one single machine. That, that's, 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 yeah, that's, uh, yeah. that's where the gaming industry is moving. And I think that when we're looking in the future and what's expecting us, you know, with, with, with the metaverse and with VR and AR, yeah. oh, it's going to be dramatic. I think that uh, uh, the major change, it's going to really affect change in culture as well. Imagine what GDC is going to be like. We're all wearing AR glasses and there's just stuff going on all over. I mean, I just hope that we'll still meet face to face, you know, but oh, yeah, uh, yeah. let's do it here. But maybe it can be another face to face. I think we are still culturally bound, you know, bound to to a different way of thinking. I think that uh, the, in the future, thing, uh, people will look, uh, will look at us and say, it's a, it's a different, it's, a, it's kind of a different civilization. I think that the gaming industry is really going to change the entire culture of the, of the world. I think we started seeing it with mobile, but it's going to be so that much more dramatic once Metaverse will start kicking in. Yeah, it'll be exciting. We'll be here. We will, we will. Awesome. GDC 2032, something like that. <laughs> <There we go. laughs> Thank you, Dory. Thank, Thank you, you for coming by. Yeah, All right. my pleasure. Thank you.